Back on the sports of the TYT variety. Ah, I like that intro. It made me feel warm it's and fuzzy. It's different. Uh, I've gone mad. Uh, you know, have you seen Alice in Wonderland? You just, made out, you well, just made out with your cup of coffee. You just made out with your cup of coffee. Like You've coffee. lost it. I've like co- I coffee. Like it. I like it. Do you know what I did today? I pulled a. I pulled a. I thought in. I, I felt like I was in your head. I needed. I, feel I thought about either going out to get a new sports coat for the Vegas trip, which this could be going up while I'm in Vegas. God bless my soul. Hopefully, I'm still alive. God bless his wallet. Instead, I went to. I found a 24-hour dry cleaner. So you're, that's that's what that's what goes on in my head. I don't know. I just thought it's suits and bow ties <laughs> and you know pocket squares and whatever. Coffee and then twenty four hours. It's, it's pretty it. accurate. <laughs> Throwing a couple of footballs in there and we're good. And the Alice in Wonderland reference is like the Mad Hatter who has like one of my favorite lines, but I forget it. So the Rockets want to know part of Man Boo's Marcus saw in the two thousand seven draft. Yes, that's what we're talking about. Here's the two thousand seven draft. Greg Oden. That didn't work out too well. Kevin Durant. Interesting. How'd that well, How'd that ah, he's not a bad guy. Uh, Al Horford. Interesting point. Mike Conley. Not bad. Jeff Green. Not, not bad. bad. Joe Kim Noah, number nine. Had a couple years. Good couple of years. Swaggy P, number 16. Good at Snapchat confessions. Uh, Aaron Aflalo, number 27. That's a UCLA player, too. Second round, 48th overall, Marcus Saul. They wanted no part of man boobs. Here's the quote that the Rockets had. Uh, it comes from, by the way, a book I would urge many people to read. Michael Lewis, he wrote The Big Short, he wrote Moneyball, he wrote many, many fantastic books. His newest one, The Undoing Project, sheds light on why organizations balked on an opportunity to snag Big Spain. The Big Spain? And I quote, so much writing. For instance, in the 2007 draft, there had been a player his model really liked, Marc Gasol. This is about the Rockets and their, their decision to not pick him. Gasol was 22 years old. A seven-foot-one center playing in Europe. The scouts had found a photograph of him shirtless. He was pudgy and baby-faced and had jiggly pecs. The Rocket staff had given Marcus Ola a nickname. Man boobs. Man boobs this and man boobs that. That was my first draft in charge and I wasn't so brave, said Maury. He allowed the general ridicule of Marcus Ola's body to drown out his model's optimism about Marcus Ola's basketball future. And so instead of arguing with his staff, he watched the Memphis Grizzlies take Marcus Gasol with the 48th pick of the draft. The odds of getting an all-star with the 48th pick in the draft were well below 1 in 100. The 48th pick of the draft basically never even yielded a useful NBA bench player. False? What? Wrong! Mo- Manu Ginobili! Draymond Green! Not the 48th pick, but the second round. Uh, and that's it. But, I mean, come on. So then Maury after that said he banned nicknames because it had such an effect on their decision-making for man boobs. What a great nickname. That is an awful nickname. No, I mean, I'm I mean, sure not for him, but it. this is this might have been before the man boob became a trend. 2007. No, the man, yeah, man boob became a trend in like 2015, where people true. were trying to get man boobs. People were just going out with their phones, hanging out on their waistband, trying to be oh. dads, the dad bod. Was that ever acceptable? Like, even never. when it was happening, or did you she think go to it jail. wasn't? She go to jail. You know who does that? I can't believe. It. I'm so sorry. Uh, coach Nick does that. Uh. People all break <laughs> But he's a coach. So Sometimes he, his hands are so filled in the game. That so he, he just gets can't a pass. Get his pocket. He's a, he gets a pass. <laughs> no one gets a pass. If I came in with a, a a belt buckled, like one of those, like here's the only time I think it's acceptable. I've seen contractors with those like those old Nokia phones that are like indestructible. If you're like a contractor, you have like the hard hat on, you're doing construction, need your phone on you. Is that accepted? Jason, we're not gonna go through. We're not gonna experience. Well, I hope not any some any sort of like nuclear war. I'm bringing it back. So there's no need to have your phone that protected. It's like what do you mean we're not, not going to have a nuclear war? I just said that. We've I, never been hope, closer. Let's, let's hope not. But anyway, I would think that we're not. So your phone can go firmly in your pocket. There's no need to, for it to be on the attached to the belt. The only people that do that... Have you heard about the I Samsung the worst, phone? It, bl- it blows up. <laughs> well, it's still going to blow on your belt if it blows up in your pocket. Yeah, it's a little closer to your wiener. But either way, it's just... It's, it's a disaster. It's something that it goes on hand in hand with Crocs with people who like to uh, cut in front of you to just then walk slower. These are the type of things my, uh, my that cause people some mental, <laughs> mental problems. My friend's dad was uh, over. He was, uh, uh, he was, or we were, we saw him recently and he was wearing Crocs and the first thing he said in a dead serious face was, how great are Crocs? They're not. They're, they're good for coming out of the shower and then yes, taking I, them exactly off the gym, before you get... You have, if you're before showering you, at the gym and you need like shower sandals... No, not even at the gym. People might see you. It's <laughs> like in your house. Yeah, but Between that means, your bathroom to your living room. That means people have to look down. And sometimes they don't want to see what you got, you got working there. Some depends what gym you go to. <laughs> you need Equinox? 
I've never, yeah, I've been to Equinox. Yeah. All right, I, this is, we're tangent it a lot, but... This has everything to do with man boobs. But Mark Cell Gasol... Phones, nuclear war. <laughs> how, I mean... Well, well, the Gasol, turned the out only great. thing I will say about this is they should have, ref- like, they looked to his... It's not like Pau Gasol is the, the image of a physical Perfect, specimen. Yeah. Like, yeah, I've not seen him with his shirt off anytime soon, but he doesn't look as if he's ripping in all cylinders, but he's still a very, very good player. At that yeah, time, especially, so, was uh, coming into... To be one of the best players we'd seen in that so, position. So, again, the interesting thing with, uh, and so I keep checking, we have like time limit on our card here in the camera. So people are like, why do you keep looking at your phone? Because I'm easily distracted too. Uh, the 48th pick in the draft to get an All-Star is a remarkable, rare, remarkably rare thing, and it happened. But, and you really can't get mad at the Rockets. You can't be like, oh, what an idiotic decision. Because if you look through every draft at least once in the past 10 years, every team's made an idiotic decision. Right? Or idiotic's not a fair word to use, but Aaron Aflalo was the 27th pick, and I believe he was an all-star at one point, or at least was shooting like one, uh, with the Nuggets. So why didn't Aaron Aflalo go number 10 over mm. like a Yi Jin Lin or something like that? So everybody makes mistakes. Just don't let, you know, some, you know, movies <laughs> may cause some problems. My mom calls them movies. <laughs> movies. Oh, oh, Billy, when the camera's about to cut. And I think that's it on movies. Yeah, don't. You can never really blame a, uh, an organization for not picking who is expected to be picked first. When did Steph Curry go? Pretty sure he went pretty After, far down the line. Not to the Knicks! We know that. And the Timberwolves drafted two players before him. Johnny Flynn and Ricky Rubio, and then Steph Curry went. He turned out fine. Ah, he's doing all right. Steph Curry's going to trade him. I'm just kidding. Maybe. Who knows? Bye, everybody. Have a wonderful weekend or something.